With both Black Widow and White Widow in the game, I was always curious if I could combine them into a single deck. Most people put them in the Darkhawk deck, but we aren't most people. The idea I had was to put them in a High Evo deck. Some time ago, I was helping one of my viewers craft a High Evo deck, and this is one of the ideas that I had previous to that that I shared with them and had fantastic success at a lower level than I was which really speaks to how effective this deck can be at any type of level you're at right now. For the junk cards, we of course have White Widow, which can throw a object onto the other side of the opponent's board. We have Green Goblin, which can also throw himself onto the opponent's side of the board. Along with Black Widow, who, while she doesn't exactly put a card on the opponent's side of the board, they have to actually play it there. With all of that junk, we have Cyclops to the rescue, or not, to negatively afflict the cards that we have put on their side of the board so they cannot avoid the Cyclops effect. We also have Wasp. It's a free cost card and can also negative afflict our opponent's cards. You combine that with a Scorpion and a Hazmat, and now a lot of cards are negatively afflicted, which leads into a free Abomination on the last turn. A lot. You can practically guarantee a free 9 power card. The deck rounds out with Titania, who is a 1 cost 5 power card, which is fantastic for enough power at the end of the game. And Ajax, who on the last turn, if you need to float energy for Cyclops trigger, you can play Ajax and still float one. In previous iterations of this deck, I had Hulk in this spot, so if you don't have Ajax, feel free to use Hulk. The card I haven't mentioned, kinda sorta, is High Evo. You never play him. If you do, your game plan is definitely not going according to plan. Let's get into some games. My creations. Okay, first up we have Liberi Fatali. Yes, I butchered that name. Our hand is Black Widow, Hazmat, and Ajax. Sentinel, yes, this is an Arisham deck. They have 20 cards during turn one. Lemuria, we can Scorpion. Next turn will be Black Widow. Yes, Black Widow, right. Mobius cuts off our Abomination if we draw into him. They have four cards in hand. One of those is a Widow's Bite. So there's the Abomination cut off, unfortunately, due to the Mobius. The Mobius is a card in their deck, so they are probably a Loki Arishem version. They have priority, so I could throw down a Hazmat. I will throw down High Evo mid and set up to win Crown City. Let's see. With Ajax. There's Titania Ajax on the last turn. They have priority. So I could play Hazmat here, and then Ajax and Titania on the last turn. Dracula, okay. And I think I spread out, so I play Titania mid and Ajax right. Ajax is a lot of points. I don't know quite how many. And then Titania just fortifies middle. Ugh, is this enough on the flip? I don't think it's enough on the flip. Oh, wow. Like and subscribe. <laughs> we would, we would tiebreaker. What a nail biter for the first game. It did go to tiebreaker. But even if Dracula hit a different card they had in their hand, it would have needed to be a decent amount of points because they had to surmount seven. So this is why I played Titania middle and it was to try to win outright. But uh, yeah, that didn't happen, but we were still able to recover with the Ajax play winning Crown City.
Okay, we have switched to Conquest. We are against Zagreus. We have a decent early game in hand. We have Scorpion and then Black Widow. And if necessary, High Evo. But typically, you don't want to play him out. You'd rather be doing other things. We are going up against a normal deck. We are going up against a Darkhawk deck. So the rock is good for Washington, D.C. if we can draw into it. I will play Scorpion into the unknown and see what that location brings us. I almost definitely want to play Black Widow next turn, not have priority, so then I can Hazmat and hit the Widow's Bite for another minus one. Good, so this might be Sentry Annihilus Darkhawk. So I do need to be careful with Hazmat and Cyclops and the like. I will play... Let's play Black Widow over here too to potentially block any anything they want to send over if it ends up being a Sentry. But they also could be running Viper. Okay. Carnage instead to destroy. They have priority now. I think I just Cyclops now. Yes, if I Cyclops now, they will still have priority. And then I can Hazmat the next turn. So I'm going to snap into this. Because I see what I want to do. And I should have a free Abomination after I play Hazmat especially. And then I can position Ajax where I need the power. Okay. They still have priority. Yes, they do. This is perfect. I have White Widow and Hazmat. So let's throw White Widow here and Hazmat over here because next turn I can Abomination and Ajax and the Cyclops will go off again. The reason I'm playing White Widow left is because I want them to think they are safe middle. They are clearly going to carnage me middle. So I want them to think that I'm going to avoid that lane. So I'm not committing any resources here because I can easily flip it with an Ajax or I can put both Ajax and Abomination middle and easily overcome that. Oh, interesting. They didn't... Mm. Okay. That's interesting. So now this is just a win all three lanes. So it is Ajax, Center, and Abomination right. And then the Cyclops trigger goes off twice, assuming they have two cards here and this isn't their Carnage lane. But we are in a very strong position, so I'm seeing this through. Okay, one card. So what is this one card? Dune? Annihilus. Okay. If you insist. <laughs> no problem. So we played this right. It was win all three lanes. And we executed the game plan to perfection. They kind of gave up middle, I guess, banking on winning left and right. They succeeded winning left. But again, with a free abomination, that's just a ton of power that people aren't expecting on the last turn, coupled with another large card. My okay, next up we have Z Paneel. We have not a great set. Do I play down? What do you have? You have a normal deck. I have priority. Because if I play Wasp now, I can throw Green Goblin down. Oh, yes. uh, I should have played Wasp. <laughs> Such is the life of a patient player. I can get down Scorpion now, though. So get down Scorpion. I badly want to snap now that I have a advantage because I can just throw Green Goblin there. So that's what I'm going to do. I am going to snap. I'm going to hold back on Wasp for now because now I can start to get down cards early. Okay, let's see what deck you are. Okay. Still got a lead, so that is good. Are you telling me I can White Widow and just completely lock them out? White Widow and armor? Sure, 
White Widow in armor. Let me try to keep this advantage. So they're capped out, in theory. Ooh, Abomination. Fancy. I think I just play... Do I play Ajax? Do I play Abomination? I could just play down Black Widow, I suppose. Deny them a draw? This might be dangerous. Okay, there's that. Now what do you have for me? I do have 7 energy. I mean, that's nice. Do I have priority? They have priority. If they hazmat, in theory, I'm still... What is this is high evo. Yeah, it's high evo. Am I overthinking this? I mean, I, I might be overthinking this. So let me just play Ajax, A bomb, Wasp, and call it a day. There's Hazmat. Oh, are they running Luke Cage? They might be running Luke Cage. Oh no, they're not. Okay. <laughs> I was I was overthinking it. So yes, this is a slim margin left, but I was basing it on my opponent and them being a high evo deck. And high evo typically doesn't have a way to buff cards. Now they could have been running Luke Cage, so on some level this was a light risk. In hindsight, having a bigger lead left would have been better playing the Abomination, but I also wanted to, to deny them the card draw as well. So that's kind of a gut call. In hindsight, sure, Abomination Left is safer, looks safer for this game, but if they were running High Evo Hulk, I wasn't keeping track of how many turns they were carrying over points, but now this extra 9 power, A-Bomb got hit, but he was originally 9, so the extra 9 power may actually make a difference. The thing is, you can't play around every single possibility, so you just have to make a best determination Okay, what's more likely? Is it more likely they have Luke Cage? Is it more likely they have a Hulk? I went that it's more likely they had a Hulk. And so that's what I played around. And Luke Cage just beats me. So that's that's kind of that high level play where you have to be okay losing to a certain path as long as you cover the path that you that it's more likely you're going to see. And you just have to live with the results. My creations. Okay, next up we have Lily. Hotel Inferno, I am not a fan of playing there. It's turn one anyway, and I always want to save Wasp for later. They have eight cards in their deck on turn one, so they are in normal destroy deck. I was not paying attention while I was talking. So Ajax was the one destroyed. That kind of stinks. <laughs> Scorpion right. One of this deck's weaknesses, kind of, sort of, is destroy. Because we are kind of a junk deck. I of silence, so they can't play... We could lock them out of a, of a lane. That's always possible. Uh, so would I throw down my Cyclops now? I will throw the... This is just a risk. So I'm, I'm disadvantaged, so I'm playing very risky. But my plan is to play Cyclops here, dissuade them from playing here, and hope they only play two cards here and I can fill them, assuming they don't have Killmonger. Oh, so they're almost definitely going to play there now. Uh, let's see. Why is this Deadpool only one? It got hit by the Scorpion. <laughs> Oh, that's hilarious. Who has, who has priority? I tell you what. I can absolutely neuter this Deadpool. A warrior has nothing to be ashamed of. By playing Wasp with priority. So that is what I am going to do. And what's my big cards left in my deck? I don't think... I think Ajax is my biggest card. So that's fine if I get Vibranium at this point. So we have completely... Unless they play... Hulkbuster? Are they gonna are they gonna counter me? They did not. Perfect. So Deadpool is a big whopping zero points because what underwear. zero times do? I can, two, I can do that math. It is zero. So no more Deadpool for them. The Lord works in mysterious ways. Now this is where I could try to lock them out, but I do have priority. So oh. Nerd. Uh 
you have the natural counter to destroy in your deck. <laughs> you, and you have it played her. I kind of want to send a green goblin over too, but that, that just feels risky at this point. So I will just play armor and vibranium. And the Cyclops at least goes off once. Yes, they're, of course they're going to play over here. I actually could have locked them out. Okay, there's Killmonger. I definitely need to change my underwear. So this is just a death play, I guess. I only have six energy. Where is it likely they're going to play death? How many cards have they destroyed? A Nico and Deadpool twice. So their death is four. So Titania is a risk at this point since I have priority. And I think I just try to go after Tiebreaker. So I think I'm just playing Green Goblin middle. I would have loved another Vibranium. Okay. Yeah, there were no outs there. They retreated later, which is a good move. I always say retreat later, and the higher up in ranks you get, the more people you face that will retreat later. But I couldn't think of a way they could win. Their null had to be tiny. So they're not playing null. And their death, we calculated that. That went down to whatever I said, three or four cost. So then what do they pair death with? Because null and death are their biggest cards. And we just covered that null is tiny. So therefore they can only win one lane. So when I think, okay, my opponent can only win a single lane. I'm fine with it going to tiebreaker if the difference is going to be large enough. So I'm sending Green Goblin over mid. So I have a 12 point lead mid. If they play death mid, that's 12 points. So they would need to play something else. Uh, Venom maybe is the only thing they could possibly pair it with at this point because we absolutely destroyed their Deadpool. Cyclops is going off twice. So I'm winning a tiebreaker. So really they have to try to win left and also another lane because in all likelihood I am going to win a tiebreaker. Again, I'm not going to run out the full math. So I'm adding two points here. So I'll be up by five. I'm adding three points here. I'll be up by 12. And then this is a tiebreaker. So I'm doing the math now as I talk it through. So 12, up 12, up uh, five. So that's 17 points. So they have to add a total of 17 just to tie. Highly unlikely because of the scenarios we walked through. Okay, we are up against... First location is Danger Room. We have a normal deck. Playing Hood into Danger Room makes me think that is not Erishem. I'm um, not Eri not uh, Annihil, it's the other A. But in the back of my mind, maybe. <laughs> so we'll just play down hazmat. Who's still in this fight? Me or you? We won't snap yet. They didn't play, which I guess is good for the scorpion. And thunderbolts? I'm snapping now. Forget this. Because Black Widow's going into Comratage too. Yikes. Now, if there's a way, like if you have bonus energy, playing Black Widow first. And Scorpion next is fantastic because Scorpion then hits the Widow's Bite and now it's negative two. A Goblin? I don't know what deck this is. It might be... That's funny. Got one of them destroyed. Boy, playing Cyclops mid was fantastic. Good choice. Do I chance the Abomination left? I think I do, but also I'm afraid this is Galactus. <laughs> like I'm, I'm terrified that this is Galactus. So let's see. Does the Abomination stick? Yes, it does. Oh, that's a fancy play. Yeah, they just need a big card middle. Do they have a big card middle? They have a Demon from the Hood, and then Doc Ock, so clearly it's a jump deck. But I'm actually at 11, but yeah, the, the 10 power, that's what beats me. Doc Ock, Demon. Yeah, not, not powerful enough middle. Okay, up next we have Flip Flop Flippity. See you on the Flippity Flip! We have nothing to do turn one. Eight cards in hand, in deck on turn one. That is a normal deck. 
We will try to get the raft. It would be nice if I could get Cyclops to continue to get points middle. I definitely do Black Widow. And then next turn... Oh, I mean, I got it. It's turn four. Do I do the... I'm going to snap into this. I might do the Green Goblin Titania move. White Widow Titania it might be a little safer. But uh, we're not safe over here. Nerd Dynamite. So Titania first, yes. And then Green Goblin second. Okay. Perfect. Widow's Bite and Atuma gets destroyed. Okay, but we got the 0-16 and Orca. Definitely don't play middle. I could play White Widow middle. That's what I could do to fully clog them. And then Hazmat? Yeah, I think that's what I do. White Widow Hazmat, that gets me a large Ajax. And then Orca on the right. Perfect. So we clog the middle. Interesting. So what... I mean, if this is... This can't be Destroyer. Okay. Victory. What was the play there? No? What deck is this? <laughs> oh. They might have been planning the Cheeky Zola. Which, I have priority. That would have lost anyway. Or even if I hadn't have filled middle, it still would have lost. Because I was playing Orca right. Orca is 16. Yep, because he's by himself. 16. And I'm actually playing Wasp and Ajax left. So what that does is Wasp hits no first, drops him to 7, and then when he duplicates, he's 14. So yes, that would have won middle. It wouldn't have won right anyway because of the free Orca. Thank you, Raph. And Ajax, of course, just wins left because of the Zola being at 0. Strong win to, to finish this gameplay out. Okay, so here's the deck once again. No, I haven't been recording all through the day and night. <laughs> I just, I have to pick my spots. I kind of have to fit in recording when I can. So I recorded a little bit earlier and now I'm recording a little bit at night. The reason I have Hulk on here is because he slots in perfectly. Just flip out Ajax, put in Hulk, and you are good to go. You don't really lose much, quite frankly, if anything. And honestly, the deck might even be better with the Hulk in it. <laughs> uh, give this deck a try. Let me know what you think, as always. Before we get out of here, I'll throw it to a bonus clip. Okay, next up we have the famous Dr. Toboggan. The doc is in. A decent starting hand. We are up against Arishem. Nothing to be feared. Turn two is in all likelihood a White Widow. I am unsure where I want to play her. The Cable is in their deck, so this is in all likelihood a Loki Arishem player. We are going White Widow. I'm afraid to snap and clue them in, so I'm, I'm not going to snap, unfortunately, and I'm just going to play this out this way. Are they full-filled middle? They full-filled middle. Cyclops middle. I might play armor right to guard against a Nihilus? They have priority, though. I mean, I take the lead, and then I can just armor after the fact. Okay, perfect. So I took the lead. I'm gonna armor right, just in case. And then play Abomination Middle, and that should... That should seal the deal, in case they have some weird Annihilus play. It, I'm kind of shocked that they stayed in. 
What? They're still staying in? This is shocking. So we make sure they can't destroy the goblins. And we take a sizable lead middle. What is the play here? That's not Luke Cage? There we go. We played around them destroying the goblins beautifully, and this is just a masterful game. Uh, I don't know if there's too much to break down. I'm sure I added some editor's notes in there along with the explanations I gave, but we were ready for them staying in to guard against an Annihilus play, but Destroyer is the same difference, and we were able to pull it out.